Welcome to this episode of The Wolf and the Shepherd. Today we're going to be talking about the Jerusalem Syndrome. Uh, kind of an interesting topic that we stumbled on. I, I don't remember if I was reading a news article or what I was doing. I said, hey, it, you know, have you ever heard about this Jerusalem Syndrome? And you know, you, you told me, no, I haven't. I said, maybe we ought to do a little bit of research on this, and let's do a podcast about it, because I think folks might find this kind of interesting. Well, first of all, I thought it might be a good name for a band, to be honest. Well, yeah. But yeah, then, but what, what kind of genre of band? The Jerusalem Syndrome. I don't know. It had mm. to be an alt band. Yeah. But the problem is there's not that much alternative music out there anymore. Maybe it would have been a good name for a band like 30 years ago. Yeah, maybe, but um, I also thought, well, there's going to be issues with the logo because if we're having to pay per letter the Jerusalem Syndrome, we're going to go bankrupt just on doing the T-shirts. Well, yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah, especially if you have to, like like you say, pay per letter. That's that's pretty long. But, I mean, they could go by, like, TJS, right? Yeah, they could. But, um, like you said, we, we did have to do a little bit of research on this one, more than we normally do, which, you know, is like, saying I walked, you know, four and a half feet to the refrigerator rather than was able to reach three feet, three feet from my seat to the refrigerator. Right, and, and let's, let's go ahead and be honest. I actually, for the first time, yeah. did a smidgen of research. I didn't leave all the research up to you this time. Did you, now, did you actually use Google or did you use Bing or Yahoo or no, Do- I asked, Go? No, I asked Jeeves. I went into Ask Jeeves. Is that still around? Yes. Really? I don't know. Okay. I'm lying. The problem I have with DuckDuckGo, right, is I like the fact it says, oh, you're not being tracked. But to be honest with you, I don't really type much stuff in where I bother about anybody's tracking well. me. But it comes up with so few results when I use DuckDuckGo. I, can, I just can't use it for research on stuff. Yeah. I, li- I like the fact it doesn't really have many ads, but... Yeah, but you know. I think people are going into DuckDuckGo to uh, do a different type of research yeah. than we're doing for the podcast, yeah. if yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, but um, DuckDuckGo, if you want to sponsor us, we mm. are available. We do not have an official uh, search engine sponsor yeah. yet. That's true. So we are available, and we will edit out any... Um, I guess. <laughs> well, we haven't said anything bad about Not bad. Duck, Duck, We did yeah. do a podcast about ducks, but I yeah. I think uh, they'd be okay with what we said about ducks. Yeah, that was more duck, duck, piss off, though. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah, true. But um, anyway, Jerusalem Syndrome. I tried to find a really simple definition of it. Okay. But, you know, the more websites I actually visited, it seemed like the worse and worse in terms of like being able to find a simplistic definition of it, which didn't stretch into multiple paragraphs. So, so honestly, the more you researched it, the harder the it harder became it got, to define. Yeah, it got wow. it got worse. So I actually went with the Wikipedia one, which you know immediately smacked to the little bit of skepticism. But it said um, the Jerusalem syndrome is a group of mental phenomena involving the presence of religiously themed obsessive ideas delusions or other psychosis like experiences that are triggered by a visit to the city of jerusalem okay now i must admit i did have to read that like about four times because the only bit i I really got out of it the first few times was a visit to the city of jerusalem right yeah so uh, let's break that down for a minute so obviously uh criteria number one you got to go to Jerusalem. Go to Jerusalem. Yeah, and it's okay. the syndrome you get from going to Jerusalem. They just put the in front of it just to kind of explain it. So, Well, it makes it sound more yeah. official when you put the right. in front of it. I mean, we could have been wolf and shepherd, but we had yeah. to throw two yeah. Ds in there to make it sound we, we much more been, legitimate. We could have been wolf backslash shepherd. I don't know. Yeah. Wolf and shepherd. Yeah. Uh, I know. We would have gotten confused on the slashes, though. I, yeah. I, I would have used a forward slash. You would have used a backslash. Now, what's in, the difference? Uh, the direction it goes. One goes forward, one goes no, back. I mean, like, what does it mean in terms of, like, you know, is there any kind of mathematical meaning if you have a forward or a backward slash? I don't think in math it does. Right. Because obviously in ASCII... Well, yeah. In in that and in uh, programming... Yeah. But it I matters. Just, I just On the internet, it matters. Yeah, I just don't know why... 
why do we need two slashes? Know, we've created another problem. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's anyway. make a note of that to not okay. look that up. So anyway, um, we've knocked it actually more basic than the Wikipedia definition. It's a syndrome you get, or some people get, when they go to Jerusalem. Okay. Yeah. So... Obvious, obviously, visitors that are showing up to Jerusalem and, and they end up with this Jerusalem oh, syndrome. Oh, it's not even visitors. Oh. But we'll get on to that later. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's not even just visitors. All no. right, well, yeah. uh, that shows you the extent of my research. <laughs> but um, it, it doesn't even just re, uh, affect one religion or domination. It's, you know, actually Jews, Christians, and Muslims who get affected by the Jerusalem syndrome. Okay. And obviously, that leads to you know people the majority of people who i guess I, I don't know if you can call it afflicted or they get the syndrome or whatever you know normally have you know a firm kind of religious belief or doctrine before they go there but some are very passive in that belief but um I don't. So, I haven't read about any atheists who have gone there and suddenly got the Jerusalem syndrome. Right. So it, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have like a member of the clergy, for instance, or somebody that's very devout religious person that's gonna capture this. Right. It, it could just be your average Joe. Maybe they're uh, a non-practicing Jew or a uh, you know a Christian that hadn't been to church in 20 years it so it, it could affect just about anybody yeah and actually wearing a mask will not prevent you from getting it uh, but if you stay <laughs> six feet away from Jerusalem would that help uh, no I, I, don't, mean, I don't think I don't think distancing works either oh, it's, okay. so you know this, well, but, this is immune oh, to masks well, yeah but well it's it's immune to masks but you have to be in Jerusalem so if you yeah. stay 6 feet away from Jerusalem you're not going to catch it that yeah we might need to look into that yeah that might be the answer although if you're actually deliberately going to visit Jerusalem keeping 6 feet away from Jerusalem might kind of ruin kind of, the point of the trip. Yeah, defeats the purpose. Yeah. I mean even if you got like a real cheap plane ticket or something. Yeah. yeah. I mean you might as well go on in. So generally the thing is that you know everybody who's been recorded as having it does have some level of religious belief, some you right. know doctrine, you know they might not be fanatical or anything, but they do tend to have some, you know uh, pre-belief before they go there but you know what has come out is that you know a lot of the people who do get the syndrome were previously well balanced they hadn't had any psychological disorders or any triggers red flags or anything else before it's just an absolute surprise that some people kind of get it although not being skeptical i bet you i could probably pick them out if i had to really kind of pick out from a lineup yeah. who's likely to get it out of the uh people boarding the aircraft right yeah it, and i i've been there you know i've i've done a lot of flying for uh jobs and everything and i'm sitting on the airplane and you're picking out those people as they're coming down the aisle right. saying please don't sit by me please right. don't sit by me oh oh please not this guy not 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 this woman whatever so you could probably do the same thing if you're flying to Israel. It's like, yeah. not going to get it, not going to... Oh, look yep. at that guy. Yep. Oh, yeah. He's definitely yep. getting he's, the Jerusalem he's syndrome. He's getting it. Yeah. He's yeah. getting it. <laughs> so, yeah, the, um, you know, the best known, best known manifestation of uh, Jerusalem syndrome is normally it's a person who has been well-balanced because I think if you have had some type of psychotic issue before, they just figure this is another one to add to the list. So I don't even know oh. if they put this on your uh, resume of uh, psychotic issues you've had before. They just go, yeah, he's having another episode. Right. Yeah. 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 And it just, it so happens to be he's in Jerusalem. So that's why, because when he goes to Legoland, he believes he's a master builder and is going to make his own country out of Legos and be the Lego king. Right. Yeah, that's, that's pretty accurate, I think. Um, now, now, one thing is that that what uh, studies have not been able to really kind of uh, get to the bottom of is the timing of how it occurs because mm. it, in the vast majority of cases it kind of kicks in on the second day okay right on the second day right and so um, so you got it you got to spend at least 24 hours there. yeah and uh, it 
kind of goes away again in most cases the moment you kind of leave Jerusalem or very shortly afterwards. So it's definitely the proximity effect, like you were saying earlier about that six feet away. As soon yeah. as you get, you know, six once, feet once, away, you, once of... you get the six feet away, see there, there we go again. So yeah. once again, if you don't want to catch Jerusalem syndrome, just stay six, six feet, feet away, away from, from Jerusalem, Jerusalem and yeah. you're safe. Yeah. Uh, that this help tip is brought to you by the wolf and the shepherd yeah we're trying to keep you healthy so uh, I have a, if you I have don't similar health advice on not getting pregnant actually oh well, <laughs> keeping six uh, feet away yeah that that yeah. that sounds like a topic for yeah. another podcast yeah but all good advice but there are actually cases where the jerusalem syndrome doesn't actually go away until a couple of weeks after leaving jerusalem Ooh, okay yeah. i don't know that's because they took mm. a lot of photos on the phone and they keep looking through them and keep getting triggered by you know, yeah, or maybe their thing. phone gets confused because it doesn't update the location settings, so the phone right. still thinks yeah. they're in Jerusalem, right. so kind of carries over. Yeah. yeah. Now, funnily enough, um, and this is one of the many funny things about the Jerusalem syndrome, I mean, I don't like to make light of any kind of mental health issue, but yes, you do. You've, got, you've got to admit this one's a bit, bit out there. Uh, it used to be referred to as Jerusalem squabble poison. Jerusalem squabble poison. Yeah. Now, what do you think? Now, do you know what the word squabble means in England? Like having a squabble is having an argument. Yeah, I'd picture squabble is, is like a skirmish, uh, like yeah. a little fight, uh, yeah. something like that. Yeah. That that's what I think of when I hear the word squabble. Uh, that word didn't jump out to me as much as the word poison, though. Oh. Uh, it's a fight that poisons you i think somebody was being lazy kind of like the writers of that new wonder woman movie the wonder woman 84 that was such lazy writing it, this sounds like the same dude well, it's a lazy movie as well well yeah terrible yeah but uh if the producers of wonder woman <laughs> <laughs> don't say for want to sponsor us we yeah do not currently have a female superhero franchise sponsoring the show that is so true. just get in touch via email at the wolf and the shepherd at gmail.com and let's be honest they need all the help they, they can do get on after that, that pile yeah. of trash yeah. yeah anyway um again we can edit that out um so yeah jerusalem squabble poison i think if you want to be taken more seriously in the academic field uh, for psychology and stuff i think you need to switch Jerusalem squabble poison to something more yeah. aligned like well, the Jerusalem syndrome. Yeah, syndrome, it, you know, that sounds like an official thing. Yeah. Uh, squabble poison. Squabble poison. Yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't even matter what prefix it has. There's nothing which you can put in front of squabble poison <laughs> to make it yeah. sound uh, legit. Uh, you know, hang on, let me try. Yeah. Uh, the last yeah. Jedi squabble poison. Well, I mean, in terms that of. That makes a yeah. lot of sense, though. Yeah, it does. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Mm. But, uh, so, um, did you know that, I don't know how much research you did on your uh, Ask Jeeves, but um, cases of the syndrome, they'd already been observed during the Middle Ages, which no. again, with that, I didn't doesn't, know that. doesn't shock me that much, because they were a bit mad, Well, generally yeah. speaking. I mean, they kind of believed a lot of weird things back in the Middle Ages anyway. Yeah. Because um, I think the Monty Python and the Holy Grail was pretty much a documentary in some yes. ways of the. Well, it's very Middle historically Ages. accurate. Yeah, it's very historically yes. accurate. Yeah. I mean that that got me through world history as right. far yeah. as what happened in England. Yeah, and uh, it was uh, roughly early 1930s, I think, before it's actually clinically described in like you know medical papers that Jerusalem syndrome was a thing. Uh, but maybe before that point, I don't know what at what time it was uh, still known as Jerusalem squabble poison. So, if you were a doctor trying to get some type of credibility, you probably would have given that one a wide berth. You know, when you've got people writing on, you know, the Black Death and all this other stuff. You know, what's your topic, Jerusalem uh, squabble poison? Yeah, but you know, if you take away the band Poison from the eighties, yeah. Wouldn't Jerusalem Squabble Poison be a better band name than the Jerusalem Syndrome? Again, this was back when printing T-shirts was expensive. So yeah, that's true. I don't think. See, I, I, plus, I what keep... are you going to do with the logo? Oh, that's yeah. that's worse. Than yeah, the but Jerusalem it, Syndrome. so the so the problem I have with that is I keep picturing the Poison logo from the band from the eighties, 
and then like Jerusalem squabble right above that. I mean, yeah. what a great T-shirt that would make. Maybe I don't know if it kind of rolls off the tongue as well as poison. Though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. But plus, also you might kind of uh, put off the anti-Semitics out there from yeah. following the band. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, uh, that that. <laughs> That could have been seen as like Hitler's favorite band, yeah. and that that might have caused some yeah, problems. Yeah. That's why you're here to keep me in check. Yeah. See, that's when I have these ideas, and I, I need somebody yeah. like you to say, "Hey, hey once yeah. again, not a good idea. Yeah. Just forget about it. Okay. And move on." Wouldn't work. Wouldn't work nowadays either. So, anyway, so um, what I hadn't taken the notice of when you first brought the topic to me was that the Jerusalem Syndrome had actually made a few appearances in pop culture. Oh, I, um, I didn't look any of these yeah, up. Yeah, and uh, there was okay. an X-Files episode where a character um, had returned to the United States after going to Jerusalem, and they said he had, you know, Jerusalem syndrome, and he ended up killing a kid who had shown signs of stigmata, I think because, you know, he was the... I don't know whether it was a case of he thought the kid was faking it and he was trying to get rid of, you know, people but, who were... But in the show, they actually called it the Jerusalem Syndrome. Uh, as far as the internet said, that might oh. be might be not true. I was going to look it up, actually, and watch that. Because I have seen, like, I think pretty much every X-Files episode there ever is, but that might have been, like, yeah, about 20 but, years ago, that episode. Yeah, but, I mean, how long ago was the X-Files? That was a long time ago. Oh, yeah, it was more than 20 years ago, the first yeah, episode. It, about. Yeah, that, that was a great show. It was. I mean, it really yeah. was. And, and it had a big following. They had that movie that came out and everything, too. Well, they had a couple of movies. Uh, like, Did they have more yeah. than one? Yeah, they had, there was um, yeah, there was at least two. Well, there was one that went in the movie theater, wasn't there? Well, I, I swear that I then. saw the X-Files movie in the movie theater a long time ago. But I could I could see no, them doing like were... a made-for-TV movie because it was a TV yeah, show, no, right? At least, yeah, there were at least two, two no. X-Files movies. Um, yeah. That's one that, of those shows maybe I need to go back and, yeah. and, and watch. But yeah. but it makes sense. I mean, the yeah. X-Files, they, they like to dig into some crazy stuff. And yeah. there's probably a couple of people sitting around the X-Files writing room like you and I say, hey, have you ever heard of this Jerusalem Syndrome? Maybe we could uh, you know write an episode about it. So I'm going to have to dig that so up. It's like Jerusalem Syndrome? Do you mean Jerusalem Squabble Poison? Yeah, that band That's exactly that was what over I mean. there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, um, but he, yeah, even the Simpsons got in the act. Hmm. Um, they, uh, Homer and, um, I think he went with a group. I can't remember if it was his family as well, but they went to Jerusalem and Homer got convinced, you know, he was the Messiah. And then eventually the whole of the tour group, you know, were all convinced they were the Messiah. So there's a whole bunch of them walking around thinking they were the Messiah. Wow. So, you, not to get too off topic here and this is going to be kind of off topic but have you ever been to jerusalem i have not yeah no. neither have i so uh that fell pretty flat so um, moving on i've been more than six feet away from jerusalem oh so, so have i <laughs> yeah probably Actually, why i haven't got the jerusalem syndrome. yeah mm-hmm. it, it was more than seven feet from me yeah the, well that belief of being the messiah um it does happen to a lot of the uh, religious tourists who go there you know like like I said, rather than just regular people who go yeah, for like, a visit. Like but, a church group. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that does happen that, you know, yeah. people get that it's Messiah like, complex and actually think they're the Messiah. And um, there's evidence that some of these people, you know, have had these obsessive religious fixations before visiting Jerusalem. And it's like, I guess Jerusalem just acts as a some type of catalyst or whatever and just you know, propels this fixation just out completely out of control. Yeah, well, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, yeah. it's the home of the world's three largest religions. It's yeah. all right there. And I, I'm guessing, like, when you go to Vegas, you know, you walk by gift shops all the time and you want to buy a shirt that says, you know, hey, I lost this in Vegas or, or whatever else. I'm guessing when you go to Jerusalem, there's all kinds of religious stuff going on there. And you just get kind of succumbed to that. I mean, you, you go to Colorado and all of a sudden you just want to be a skier. You go to California and all of a sudden you just want to be a surfer and you buy that. I guess you go to Jerusalem and there's all kinds of religious stuff around. And you say, well, maybe I want to be religious now. Yeah. The, well, actually, I mean, you know, I thought, you know, there the can only be a handful of cases, right? Otherwise, this thing would be more widespread in terms of how many people know sure. about it but 
you know, between like 79 and 93, so, you know, roughly like 14 years, there were 470 visitors from all over the world who actually experienced such extreme psychosis, they had to be hospitalized. So that isn't just the grand total of people who actually had the Jerusalem syndrome. These are the ones who had it so bad that they actually had to be hospitalized. They, they had 470. A, they had a severe case yeah, then. Yeah, and, um, but, and this is what I was saying earlier, but even local residents can be even temporarily or permanently affected mm. by it. Yeah. Well, it kind of makes you wonder, you know, did, let's say you're living in Jerusalem, you come home, you know, you had a bad day at work, right? I mean, you, you didn't sell enough sandwiches at your sandwich shop, come home, old lady sitting there, and so you're kind of beat down and, and saying, hey, you know, I am trying to do something to make everything better for this family, and the wife says, hey, I'm smelling a little bit of Jerusalem syndrome here. You need to get off your high horse. You're not as important as you think you are. And the guy's like, oh, yeah, that's true. We do live in Jerusalem, and sometimes that Jerusalem syndrome kind of sneaks up on me, so I need to get back down, and I just need to go make sandwiches again tomorrow. I'm sorry, honey. Well, it's a bit of a leap from going from being a little bit narcissistic to thinking you're the Lord and Savior. Uh, but what if you make the best sandwich in Jerusalem? Well, I don't know what the competition is, so I can't really comment on that. Well, yeah, but, you know, if, if you're the best sandwich maker in Jerusalem, you might think you're the Messiah of sandwich makers. Well, um, well, look at it this way. I mean, like, if you're making the best Tex-Mex in Texas, that's a pretty big boast. You're making it in, like, Iowa. It's probably, like, probably get it out of a can and it'd be all right. Mm, good point. You know? Like Wolf Brand chili out of the can might be the best chili they ever. No, it's eat. true. Well, it, and of course, no offense, it, Iowa. Yeah, we love if, your potatoes. Yeah, if that's the only chili yeah. you've ever had, yeah, you don't know the difference. Yeah, and if there's any Iowa potato companies out there who are looking to sponsor a podcast, yeah. we do not yet have an official potato sponsor from Iowa. So yes. maybe give us a call. Yeah, uh, and and I would rather have one from Idaho, not Iowa, because. I was not really known for potatoes. Yeah, I kind of hoping you wouldn't notice that oh. slip. But, but no, hey, that, <laughs> actually, but hey, if there's a good farmer who grows no, potatoes it, in I, Iowa, I, I think I would rather up. have an Iowa <laughs> potato sponsor. That would be great. Yeah, you you don't even have to give us a penny. We just want yeah. an official yeah. Iowa potato yeah. sponsor. It's just like we're gonna skip Tex Mex from Texas and yes. get it from Colorado. And and. <laughs> And we want someone who grows potatoes in Iowa. Yeah. Because <laughs> we're, we're all about small business here. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, a lot of the uh, tourists who they studied and, and not just the ones who obviously had it so severe they had to be thrown into hospital, they actually demonstrate very, very similar patterns of disintegration and symptoms. And what I mean by the disintegration as in you know, their normal behavior and pattern of thinking completely breaks down and it's almost like they take on another personality. I mm. mean, not, not quite schizophrenia or like dissociative right. identity disorder, but, you know... The, they just completely change. Well, yeah, the people who are with them are kind of notice a personality change. Uh, and like, like I said, those symptoms tend to start round about the second day. Okay. You know, I think that's after on the first day, you know, you're a bit tired anyway. You're well, going to be too tired to take on a syndrome well, on your well, first day. Well, let's be honest. You're jet lagged. Yeah. It, you know, you, you probably... Yeah. You, you're sleeping in a different place. Uh, it, nobody sleeps yeah. well on their first day yeah. whenever they're on a vacation or whatever. So you're getting used to the hotel room, trying to figure out what yeah. you got for dinner. You realize... I forgot my toothbrush. Now I got to go find a CVS and get me a toothbrush or, you know, the TSA, they took my shaving cream because they thought it was a bomb or something like that. So it, now you've got past all those first day travel woes. So now you're calm enough to let the Jerusalem syndrome kind of sneak up and bite you. Well, I, well, I think on the first day of you're kind of like, you know what, I think I might be Moses, but I'm a little bit too tired to kind of pull it off today. So yeah. tomorrow is, I'm going to start 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. Yeah. I am Moses tomorrow morning. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, but um, apparently the, the symptoms start off, and again, it's almost in every case with these inexplicable kind of feelings of nervousness and anxiety. But I'll tell you what, I mean, it must be like an actor, you know, going on Broadway for the first time. 
if you're going to step into like Moses or Jesus's shoes, there's got to be a little bit of nervousness going into that role. Oh, sure. You well, know? that's with any role, but especially, yeah. you know, a prominent religious figure that everybody has this idea in their mind of what they look like. Or, you know, if you look at Charlton Heston in the Ten Commandments, I mean, that was Moses. So everybody that's always been Moses is always going to look to say, Am I as good as he played Moses? Yeah. So if I'm if I'm walking around, I'm gonna be like, I'm uh, I'm not I'm not Moses. Maybe I'm like one of the other random people walking around. Uh, you know, kind of one of the B or C characters in the Bible. Maybe maybe I could pull that off. I don't think I could pull Moses off. Yeah, because it's got to be a little bit disconcerting when you're really trying to get in the role and people are booing you. Yeah. Because you know that there's out of all these people who have got Jerusalem syndrome, right? There's there's got to be a lot of them who have claimed to have been the same character. I mean, you know, if we're forgetting about the ones who you know think they're Jesus, if we take the other characters in there, there's got to be some duplicates. Oh and yeah. So that maybe they've got a website which is like you know the top ten you know Moses of you know the 1990s who had the Jerusalem syndrome. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it, you could be Zacchaeus. It's like you know, I'm I'm like five foot two. Yeah. Uh, I like to climb trees. Yeah. I, I'm Zacchaeus. Everybody's gonna look at you like you pick that dude. It, it, okay, it, we'll we'll let you pretend to be that. Well, we're pretty lazy, so I think Lazarus would is the one we'd probably try and oh, pull up. Oh, that would yeah. Yeah, like, except for good job. You've been asleep now for yeah, that, you know a few days. No, so that, no, that doing it be, well. That would be a good one. Yeah, yeah. I just gonna get like somebody that. to kind of lift you up through the roof or whatever. Or yeah, whatever. yeah. That one wouldn't be too yeah. bad. But um, yeah. Also, one of the things is you know when people go in groups, you know, even if it's just with their family, not with like a church group or something, uh, it's been noted that they have this sudden need to be alone, and then they start performing these weird kind of purification rituals and like these Jewish baths and stuff like to try and cleanse themselves. Yeah, but it look, I, I can see the part about wanting to be alone. I mean, if, if I'm going somewhere historical, I tend to want to be alone. I When I went to Boston, I want to be alone because I want to look at the historical part of that. And, you know, my family or whoever I've traveled with, they think that's boring. So if I was going to go to Jerusalem and one of the symptoms are that, you know, somebody in the group wants to be by themselves, I'd be like, look, I, I want to do my own thing. So why is that so bad if you want to go off and do your own thing? Yeah. And it's like automatically, you, oh, that guy must have the Jerusalem syndrome yeah. because he wants to go be by himself. Yeah. No, I want to actually go and read into things and take my own time. Why is that so bad? Yeah, I'll be honest with you, mate. Most of my... Uh friends they go on vacation with their family want to be left alone even if they yeah. like you know yeah. go to aspen i don't know it's yeah just... see i i think that one's cheating i i, I think that's a, yeah. a a cheating yeah. uh symptom of the syndrome right there yeah. of them wanting to be alone yeah the purification thing uh well it's, uh, it's hot maybe they just want a bath yeah uh, i mean maybe the the shower isn't that great right. maybe they have those low flow showers over right. there yeah and you're like you know i i can't seem to get clean so i i need to take more showers because i can't get all the shampoo out of my hair yeah. now i know that's not a problem for you because you don't have any hair on your head but yeah. you know it, when you're trying to wash your hair and you have this thick luxurious hair like i have you know which you don't have and i know i'm rubbing my hair here and i'm making you jealous Sometimes you got to say, you know, I got, I'm going to have to take another shower because I can't get all the shampoo out of my hair. Well, I think one of the things which does count is that um, as the condition continues, often they'll start dressing in robes to try and identify with characters from the Bible. Uh, not a robe person. Not a robe person. Where do you think they get the robes from? Do you think there's a local market which like is cashing in on the syndrome? or If there's not... We need to stop this podcast right now, and we need to go <laughs> sell there. robes in Jerusalem. Get, get Etsy or, yeah. or like eBay or something to yeah, kind of I, set us up a I, I remember online I was, stall. I, I was on a business trip one time and uh, did one of the, uh, you know, I don't know if it was Priceline or something like that, and did, you know, ended up with the fancy hotel, right, for cheap price, and stayed there, and they had one of the robes hanging in the closet, and... I'm looking at the robe, and I'm like, I'm not a robe person. I don't own a robe. I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this, but 
I'm going to wear a robe. And so got out of the shower, put the robe on, called the wife and, and did the little FaceTime thing and said, I'm wearing a robe. And she said, it, you look stupid. And that was the, the that I, was the end of my I, robe I didn't, wearing. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, surely if they have robes in the hotel room, surely you just wear one of those. And the only yeah. change would be you just wouldn't take it off. Yeah. Now, if it's got Hotel Hilton on the back of it, then obviously that's kind of like not quite so biblical as like if it's a genuine one you bought from the marketplace. But didn't you say that some people who couldn't find robes were like using curtains and stuff? Yeah. So so in my little bit of research that I found, there were some people that used the bed linens. Right. And they made the, that's and you, you call them a robe. I, I'd... I call it more like a toga. Right. You know, yeah. they, they were basically taking the bed sheets off and kind of making a toga out of that and wandering around doing that thing. Uh, I don't think I could pull that off. But <laughs> can can you imagine, though, if we had a robe store over there and we put the Jerusalem squabble poison on the back of the robes? Now we're getting somewhere. You, you know, nice embroidered robe with that on the back. Yeah. Uh, maybe get a sponsor over there, like, you know, Hilton. You know, little Hilton logo on the front yeah. and Jerusalem squabble poison on the back of the robe, and we just all walk around in the robes, sell them for like 500 bucks a piece. Do you not we think, could retire. Do you not think some of the people deeper into the psychosis will say that that's not quite as authentic as they were looking for? Well, but they're crazy, so how would they know the difference? <laughs> Temporarily crazy. Yeah. Yeah. All but, we got all we gotta do hey, this is a no refund, no exchange type right. thing. So yeah. once they buy it, it we're off the hook. Yeah. Well, um, you know, for the most point, other than those people who end up in hospital, most of the sufferers of it just tend to be kinda like a little bit annoying to the family or the group they're in or you know, the ones who require hospitalization, um, for whatever reason, around about 2010, and that's pretty much an exact year, other than it might be a couple of years either side, but around 2010, um, the episodes of um, Jerusalem Syndrome dropped like incredibly because it used to be uh, there'd be about 50 people hospitalized a year, right? From having this. Okay, like, so, thing. so roughly one a week. Yeah, so incredible uh, psychotic episodes, but it kind of went down to about two or three a year. Wow. Just dropped suddenly. That's it's, huge. It's like it wasn't fashionable anymore. Yeah. That, that's kind of sad. I yeah. mean, can you imagine if you were one of those doctors, right? And you got some some dude comes in and he's got the Jerusalem syndrome. And so it, the orderly or whatever they are, you know, comes up. You know, you're the doctor. You're walking in for your shift. And dude comes up to you and he says, okay, uh, we got Joe over here. Uh, Joseph, and, I think you oh. mean Joseph. Oh, <laughs> okay. I picked a bad name. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let, let, oh, Sebastian. Yeah. yeah. You know, let's use a good mm. English name, right? We've got Sebastian over here, and he's got a case of the Jerusalem syndrome. So, uh, so Doctor Wolf, uh, what should you uh, suggest that we do with Sebastian over here? Keep him six feet away from Jerusalem. Ah. Yeah, I mean, can't they just hop them in an ambulance and, and drive, drive them six feet six away from the city and yeah. magically they're cured? So why do we even need the hospital then? Well, remember, this I mean, was you. We're sitting came, here. This and was you who came up with the six-foot rule. It's yeah. not an exact science to cure the Jerusalem syndrome. Well, but I believe we made ourselves like PhDs in this and we cured it in the beginning of the podcast. Right. So do we need to just open up a little hospital over there where we sell the robes and everybody that shows up that has it, we just put them in a car. Like we could probably get a cheap Toyota Prius for like five grand, no. and and just drive them outside the city and just leave them out there and say you're cured. You know, walk away. I've got a better idea actually. How uh, about we just get a loan and set up a biblical theme park and let them just run with it and just let them think they're who they are. You know, like people who go to Disneyland and all that ooh. stuff. Let them just go there and just believe they're who they are, not harming anybody. Keep an eye on them. We've got security and all that stuff. Yeah, but what... Let them run around. Okay, okay. So the problem with that is, what if you have two dudes out there that both think they're Moses? Well, you give them time slots. You're you're Moses at 2 o'clock. You're Moses at 5.30. Oh, that's a good idea. 
theme park for Jerusalem. So theme, but yeah. mind you, now it's gone down to two or three sufferers a year who require hospitalization. I don't know if there's money yeah, in but that. But it's like any that. other business thing we think about. I mean, we'll, we'll yeah. make like $6. I'm betting now that they're just reporting all of those cases as COVID anyway. Oh, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Now, um, there has actually been some pretty extreme cases of the Jerusalem syndrome. As, much, as light as we've made of it, and that doesn't mean we're not going to make light of these cases either because these ones are actually kind of ridiculous. Um, well, actually, the first two are kind of sad, but the last one's ridiculous. Um, back in uh, November 2017, uh, there was a British tourist where... I think, so, he was, I think he was so, Irish. See, think see it's Irish, always got to be the British people. Well, I think he was Irish, actually. So, oh, yeah. I, I figured you'd throw it yeah. at the Welsh. I think, but, he, well, okay. I think he was because the article actually came from an Irish newspaper uh-huh. that I read. And they don't normally report on anything outside of Ireland, you know. It's like, yeah. I don't even think they reported on World War II during the war. Yeah. It wouldn't, nothing well, to do with them, apparently. They had to keep the Guinness factory open. Yeah. So, anyway, um, he disappeared in the desert in uh, somewhere close to southern Israel. I, I can't remember. I think it began with a G, Govel, or something like that. Anyway, whatever. Irrelevant. So, he, he left a trail of Bible passages and they found his laptop and all this stuff. And they found a lot, um, a lot of references to Jesus going into the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. And right. um, the last kind of update I could find on the interwebs as of November 2019, he still hadn't been found. So, that's like two years. So, I think he kind of went past the 40 days, 40 nights thing. Yeah. Or, or did he just like change his name and somehow get back on an airplane and, and go back home. And well, everybody kind of forgot about it. Well, and that could have happened. Well, maybe you'd have thought his family might kind of uh, noticed. Because yeah, this is like two years later, they still hadn't found him. Oh, okay. So so the family's actively trying to figure out what happened to the dude? Yeah, but probably from Ireland. I don't know how good their internet is. So I don't know. Well, not only that, yeah. but can we get him out have of the Google pub it. long enough know. to sober up <laughs> yeah, and, and, and realize that... that find out where he is. Yeah. Yeah, um, I can't remember. I should have written down his name, actually. I thought you knew what his name was. Seamus. Pretty sure it's Seamus. <laughs> Seamus O'Mahony or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seamus Shame, yeah. O... Yeah, Riley or whatever. Seamus O'Squabble. Oh, yeah. We're going to call him yeah. Seamus right. O'Squabble. Yeah. So, yeah. It, uh, it, public service announcement, if anyone has <laughs> any information as to the location of Seamus O'Squabble... Last seen wandering pl- in a desert. Yes. Please send an email to the wolf and the shepherd at gmail.com, and we will make sure that Seamus O'Squabble gets, family. gets home. Yeah. Uh, even though we don't have any idea how to get a yeah. hold of his family. But right. uh, it'd be a great email to yeah, read. Okay. Because yeah. most of most of the email we get, I mean, we get some emails from listeners and everything, but we still do get a lot of spam. We do get so, a lot of spam. Yeah, but I, God, that would be great to to get an email about Seamus of Squabble. It would be. Yeah. yeah. So, um, back in 1969, an Australian tourist, again not English. Uh, he, he, well, set, he set fire well, to the Atlantic Square Mosque, well, believing he was on a divine mission. Yeah, but and there was he, a whole ton of riots. But apparently, he also did a bunch of other stuff. Which once again, though, it, you say not English, but that's where you send all your prisoners. So, so did a lot of people, though. Well, no, it was all the English. That's no, the way we English. learned it in history. So that's wow. true. Yeah, uh, no, yeah, no. The winners write yeah. the history books. So that's the way we learned it. So by default, still, still English. Mm. So once again. You're doing a terrible disservice to well, your about, homeland. Well, about here. this one, this last one, and this one wasn't made well, yet. Well, 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 okay, but but we it, tell me tell me again. It, we it, we what? set fire to a mosque. The he Al set Atsa fire. Mosque, yeah. He believed he was on some divine mission, and it caused a whole bunch of riots. But I think he did some other stuff as well. But the article didn't. Which which mosque is this? It that's not the big famous one there on the Temple Mount, is it? I don't know. I think it is, isn't it? I I don't know. The Dome of the Rock. I I don't know what the actual name of that is, but isn't that the Dome of the Rock mosque? Oh, Siri, right now. Oh, all right. Hang on. Second second name check she's had in like 42 episodes, 43 episodes. Yeah, I mean, we we don't even... We're not sponsored by Apple, but yeah. yeah. All right, so so what am I asking Siri here? Uh, What's the most famous mosque in Jerusalem? Okay. All right, here we go. Let's see. Oh. Thought I just held the side hey, button down. He's forgotten how to uh, use yeah. All right. Well, we'll do it with voice. Hey, Siri. 
What is the most famous mosque? Okay. That's my phone, actually. Yeah, it, well, <laughs> yeah, your phone way over there. It, well, maybe it's because my phone was locked. Hang on. Uh, hey, Siri. That's still my phone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All exactly. right, let's give let's give it up. Yeah. It don't matter. It's one of the mosques in Jerusalem. Yeah, I mean, like, exactly. Fights it. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Well, it's still there. Yeah. So uh, he failed. Yeah, all the facts are there. That's all you need for that one. Yep. So anyway, this last one, a middle-aged American, who I'm sure you're going to say had English descendants. I'm sure he did. Right. Tourists decided that he was Samson. Right. Which is, oh, which is Samson. Good. It's okay. A new one. Right. Well, well. Now we're talking about one of the you know B characters of the Bible. Yeah. That, you know, it, obviously he had some stuff in the Bible yeah. written about him, but he's not yeah. super famous, right. right? Yeah. I mean, everybody knows who Samson is, but it's yeah. not like he took up a a huge piece of the Bible. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Unless you kind of name check Delilah, a lot, a lot of people forget who Samson is. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Yeah. So anyway, he got this idea that part of the Western Wall needed to be moved by his bare hands, right? Uh. So he was an avid bodybuilder, you know, even before he came there. And, uh, well, anyway, it didn't work out too well. And after a skirmish with um, the authorities, he actually ended up in a psychiatric ward. But one of the mental health professionals, uh, while he was giving him a diagnosis or whatever, made the error of telling him he wasn't Samson. So this kind of enraged oh, him. Yeah. Right? So yeah, he kind that, of went Hulk, Hulk mode. Yeah, right? let, let's admit, yeah. elementary mistake yeah, right there. Yeah, that's yeah. the worst thing you do. Yeah. So anyway, he, he turned into the Incredible Hulk, apparently. Yep. Uh, Bruce Banner style. And he smashed through a window, jumped out and escaped. And a nurse later found him at a bus stop. And he was quite belligerent until she praised his Samson-like strength, at which point he finally cooperated. Uh, that almost sounds a little stolen from the Bible. I, it, yeah, wasn't there a yeah. verse in the Bible about Samson waiting at a bus stop? And a nurse turning up? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. Now, didn't you have? Now, didn't you read about that as well? And it's like Dad had to come over and kind of coax him back. Yeah, from it, yeah. Well, Jerusalem? well. So, I, so I read about somebody, and and I think it was the Samson guy that they finally coaxed him back into the hospital or whatever. And so his dad had to show up and fly back with him to take him back to America just to make sure he got back safe. And then, of course, you know, it, everything just kind of subsided and everything was good. But honestly, can you see Samson, the, the real Samson, right, saying, hey, hey, dad, hey, dad, can, can you come help me? You know, he's supposed to be the strongest guy in the world, right? And, and he needs his dad to show up. Kind of, kind of sad. Well, I think what'd be worse is when he gets back to the states. All his mates go, "Hey, how's the vacation?" And he's like, mm -hmm. yeah, "Not great." Mm -hmm. I, I wonder. You know, one one thing I couldn't find, and I'm guessing you didn't find it either, is if the dude had long hair. Yeah. So, well, you figured he would. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be ironic if if they said, "Okay, all right." So, Dr. Wolf, he thinks he's Samson, and he's got long hair. Quick, get him a wig. So, so let's shave his head, like when he's asleep. And then we say, okay, all your strength's gone. you got to go yeah. home now. Yeah. Uh, you're going to miss Monday night football yeah. if you don't get on this plane. And Daddy's yeah. going to come take you home, yeah. and, and now all your yeah. hair's gone. It's like, yeah. oh, okay, well, yeah. you know, that makes logical sense. Yeah. So, so now my strength's gone. And then they tell the dad, look, just don't let him grow his hair out. Let's just rub nair all over his head and make sure he doesn't have any hair anymore and everything. Problem solved. See, this is more the reason why I think we need to run this hospital over in Jerusalem. I, I think we could fix all these problems. You know what would have been better if the nurse was named Delilah? Oh, how ironic would that be? Mm -hmm. That would have that would have been a giant mess. Mm -hmm. That that would have been a giant mess. Well, with all that said, thanks for tuning into this episode of The Wolf and the Shepherd. We certainly hope you enjoyed it, and we will catch you on the next one.